Hello everyone, welcome to LimeGrew channel. In this video, we will learn about HTTP persistence or keep alive in your API. This will help you to make your API faster. So let's get started. So the first concept that we will understand about is the basics of API. What is an API? So when we talk about API, typically API consists of certain business logic. So you will uh, write your business logic based on the requirements which has been given by the business and that business logic you will expose to certain endpoint so there will be certain endpoint through which that business logic would be exposed to external world or external system and this both these things would be typically deployed in a server and this all these components constitutes your api so API will typically consist of an endpoint with a business logic behind that endpoint. And whenever any client needs to invoke your API, so client what it will do is, let's say this is client, client what it will do is, it will send a request to your endpoint. Once your uh, endpoint will receive the request, the business logic would be invoked on the server and based on the business logic, a response would be returned back to the client. And if I talk about the timing con components in all these process, so there are two times involved. One is the server time, which is basically the time taken to execute your business logic. And there is another time T2, which is basically a time taken for the request to reach to the server and the response to reach back to the client, which is basically a network time. So typically T1 is basically your server execution time and t2 is basically your network time and execution time is something which largely depends on the how code is written how optimized your business logic is and based on that it will help to decide how faster it is able to execute and network time is something which largely when the request flows over the network and response flows over the network back to the client. So that time constitutes your network time. In this session, what we will focus on is the network time. As I just mentioned that execution time is totally dependent on the business logic or the, how the software has been written. But what we will focus on is the network time in the HTTP persistence concept. So what happens in the network time? What happens in the network when a client sends a request to a server? So let me write down here again, let me draw it, the pictorial representation. So this is client, client is sending some request to the server. So let me just write it server. So client sends a request to the server and server returns a response back to the client. But before the server executes a logic, there is a handshake mechanism happens between client and a server. So client and server does the handshaking before the request or response execution take place. So this is kind of basically, you can say, uh, let's say your API are deployed over secured uh, servers, HTTPS protocol uh, your client is using uh, and your servers are exposed as a HTTPS API. So some certain kind of handshake mechanism, handshaking happens between client and server. And what all things happen between client and server is that client will send certain kind of acknowledgement and um, server will send back the acknowledgement that okay that the server has received the uh, acknowledgement from the client and then there would be a um, certain kind of key exchange mechanism based on which both both the client and server will authenticate with each other whether this request should go through or not so there would be key exchange um, the public key would be uh, exchanged in between the client and the server and then server will authenticate based on the pub, um, public key received from the client and that is how this this complete process is the handshaking mechanism which happens every time whenever a client sends a request to the server so let's say client is sending multiple requests to the server let's say this was request one this was request two uh, this was request three and for every request the client is getting the response back 
so each time is a request is sent this process happen every time uh, whenever a new request is sent from a client to a server and this process typically takes uh, 150 to 200 milliseconds so if i go back to the previous diagram so let's say uh, this t uh, t1 was the server execution time and t2 was the network time so overall time for the client is t1 plus t2 let's say client says that they are receiving the response back in 500 millisecond and out of 500 millisecond let's say t1 was uh, 300 milliseconds and t2 is 200 millisecond which is the handshake mechanism handshake is uh, more than uh, almost 50 percent of your time is being taken by the network time in the whole process so is there an opportunity to reduce this network time because 300 millisecond is the time that your business logic has to take right but is there an opportunity to reduce this network time because if you reduce this network time then your latency the client the uh, the time in which client is receiving the response back 200 millisecond just con consist of network time if if you, if you can optimize or if you can eliminate this time period then client time would become 500 minus 200 which is 300 milliseconds so this would be a great optimization if you are able to achieve certain optimizations in t2 time which is the network time so as i just explained the most of the time in 200 millisecond is taken for the handshake mechanism between client and server they um, they share certain kind of acknowledgements and keys with each other before the request go through and this happens for each of the request whenever the client sends a request to a server so how this typically happens is let's say uh, this is my client and this is my server right so whenever the client will send a request to a server it will open a new http connection and once the server will send back the response then that connection would be closed the next request would be sent the connection would be opened again the response would be received the connection would be closed again and this process goes on so every time a new request is sent so let's say this is my request one this is my request two this is my request three so every time a new request is sent connections are opened and once the res response is received connections are closed and whenever a new connection is opened then handshake mechanism happens by default how we can solve this problem is let's say once you open the connection and server doesn't close the connection so if the server doesn't close the connection in that way the connection is going to remain open and that connection can be used to the subsequent request the same connection can be utilized to serve request 2 request 3 and whatever request will go on that can be the same connection we can reuse for serving our http request and this concept is called HTTP persistence. So HTTP persistence is a concept in which once you open the open the connection once, and reuse the same connection, reuse same connection for subsequent request. So when you reuse the same connection, then in those cases, the handshake mechanism will not happen in the subsequent request. So how this scenario will look like now with HTTP persistence is, let me write down here, HTTP persistence, HTTP persistence. So how the scenario will look like is, let's say again, this is your client and this is your server. So client will send a request for the first time it will open a new connection so request one is sent and server will return back the response now what server has enabled is on the server side http persistence is enabled 
HTTP persistence is enabled. So when HTTP persistence is enabled, then server will not close that request. The request, uh, the server will not close that connection. The connection will remain open and client will send the another request over the same connection. Request two will go on the same connection and response will come back over the same connection. And this will go on for a period of time. The same connection would be used to serve multiple requests and this will go on for a period of time. And after a period of time, the servers will say that, okay, the maximum time has passed. Now I want to close the connection. And one server will say based on the time that it has configured after that period of time, only the connection would be closed. Let's say the server has configured HTTP uh, persistence time as 30 minutes just take a hypothetical example so all the requests sent to the server in between those 30 minute period of time let's say you send 10,000 requests uh, to the server in those 30 minutes so what advantage you will get with HTTP persistence is that only the first request will will open the connection um, during those 30 minutes and all the subsequent requests from second to 10,000 requests, all the requests will use the same connection. They will not open the new connection again. Server will keep the connection open for you so that the subsequent request can be served over the same network. So you can see there is a, there are a lot of advantages using this concept. So the first advantage is that the network latency will be reduced to a huge extent. So the handshaking time that was around 200 milliseconds, which we were discussing the handshaking time, which we were discussing at 200 millisecond that will, that client will observe only in the first request because in the first request, the connection is getting opened and for all the subsequent requests from second to 10,000 requests this 200 millisecond time will not be there and the client will see lesser latency they will observe that now apis are performing faster for the client because that 200 millisecond of overhead that additional processing is not happening again and again so this is an important concept that will help you to make your api faster from the client perspective and the same concept this HTTP persistence in itself is also known as keep alive setting. So this keep alive setting is something which servers, the API owners or the API servers can enable at their end. And there are, uh, uh, I'm not going into specific technology because in some of the servers, let's say for Java based server, in some of the server, this is enabled by default. It's just that you need to configure that time that uh, by how much time you need to uh, keep this connection open at the server end. But in some of the technology, let's say Python or in, in some of the specific servers where your Python uh, logic is deployed, you may have to enable it on your own. So just keep in mind, if you want to make your API faster, do remember to check out this uh, concept, HTTP persistence, do remember to check out this keep a live setting what it has been configured for your server if it has been configured or not if it is not configured then what is the by default value the server is uh, keeping the connection open so do make some optimizations on that front based on the time that you want to keep the connection open at the server side and that will help you to make your api faster from the client perspective again this um, just i'm reiterating that this will help to improve your api speed from the client perspective because you are optimizing the network time you are not optimizing the t1 time because this is the logic that the that the application team owns right so this time is still going to remain same your code execution time is still going to remain the same but the request and response um, network time you are going to reduce to a huge extent and that time which gets added as an overall time for the client that is going to be reduced uh, uh, for them. So that was the HTTP persistent con uh, concept, keep alive concept in APIs. I hope you get the idea. Do 
apply these concepts whenever you are designing the APIs or deploying the APIs in your software programs and let and, and make your API faster. That's it. Thank you for watching out this video. Do subscribe Lime Guru channel and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.